Hi, these comments are for M. I'm using your initials for privacy purposes, and I am Michael Buckoff, the founder, owner, and the materials writer from OTC, OnlineTOEFLCourse.com, and you're one of my 30-day TOEFL writing boot camp course students. Whoa! And uh, you're trying to get 110 or higher on the TOEFL IBT exam, and with this essay, you're not going to make that happen. So what I want to do right now is to, is to actually error correct your essay. I'm going to tell you what you need to do in order to score higher on your writing practice test. So first, let's take a look at it. So I gave you 3.5 out of 5, 22 points out of 30. And the problem is you, you, didn't, you didn't really organize your writing uh, practice test in the way that the writing prompt is framed. So you have kind of a different organization. You're arguing why it's better to live in university housing, right? However, let's look at this question a little closer here. So it says, students at universities often have a choice of places to live. They may choose to live in university dormitories or they may choose to live in apartments in the community. Compare. This is the part where you're not paying attention. Compare the advantages of living in university housing with the advantages of living in an apartment in the community. Where would you prefer to live? Give reasons for your preference. So even though I did number them, you have to look at this as being the first part of the writing prompt, right? And then the second part here is where would you prefer to live? However, if you look at yours, you have here uh, uni universities offer their students dorms not only to help them save money but to offer opportunities for students to learn to live with others right then you say so I would prefer living in the dormitory so this is your first reason students can learn a lot from living in the dormitory so you talk about why it's important for students to live in dorms in the next paragraph you give an example of when you were uh, in the university living with a roommate and you gave a specific example in there and it says uh, my I got managed yeah but how does this relate to living in dorms so I I don't think you even made the connection clear on that so I think that you just don't have the structure that the writing prompt is looking for. So let's just go step by step. So the first thing we want to do is let's see what we can do to improve the organization, right? Let's work on that first. If you look at the rubric to get a general idea here, it's in the three... I mean, I, technically, I could probably score you in the two range here. Limited development in response to the topic and task inadequate organization or connection of ideas, right? So these are two problems that you have even in the two range. However, your writing, your sentence structure vocabulary is incredibly high. So I think it's, it's even up there with almost consistent facility in the use of language. Uh, however, you tend to use short or not longer sentences, but your grammar, your word choice is very good. Okay, so let's go back here, so this is what you wrote in the first paragraph, right? Now, keeping in mind that this is the writing prompt, here's what I did to, to create an introduction, your introduction, I think, that is better framed around the writing prompt. Humans, social animals that can't live on their own, need to constantly socialize with others and cooperate together in order to have a better life. In addition, notice I'm getting a little more narrow, Young men and women entering universities for the first time have a vital need to interact with others while they pursue their undergraduate and graduate studies. Right, so now I'm talking about students and not just human beings. When these students get admitted into the universities of choice, they'll have to decide where they will live. Some students will choose to live on campus in dormitories, while other students will opt to live off campus in apartments. There are advantages for both of these living arrangements. Right, so then, the way that I've set it up is the next paragraph talks about the advantages 
of living on campus in dorms. The paragraph after that talks about the advantages of living off campus in apartments. And then we have to get to your opinion here. But I'm not even going to put that in the introduction. You could if you want. But I'm just I'm going to frame it right now where uh, we'll talk about the advantages first. Okay, I'm working on your, your, your first body paragraph, so I'm changing your topic sentence slightly. Many students prefer to live in dormitories on campus so they can have constant social interaction. If they live in the dormitories where students live together, How about if students live in the dormitories where students live together, they're forced to constantly interact with others. Because most students live with roommates and even if they are in a single room, students in the next rooms can come to the rooms easily. See, you have great control there. That's a great sentence. Uh, then you have... Uh, I'm going to add therefore instead of so, make it a little more formal. Students need to be able to effectively communicate and compromise with the others in order to share a place to live, which helps them improve their, their skills to socialize with other people. Eventually, how about these dorm... How about that? Eventually, these dorm residing students will obtain social interaction skills. These dorm residing students will obtain these social interaction skills how about which will help them. You want to put here a verb, succeed or to succeed, but with uh, help you can use the what's called the bare infinitive or the base form of the verb. It will help them succeed at work and even enrich their private lives after graduation. Yeah, indeed, students don't have to worry about being interrupted by someone. See, this is, I wouldn't even put this here. I would put this in another paragraph here. This is fine. You got 100 words right here. So the purpose of this paragraph is to focus on the advantage of living in a dorm. Okay, so then you have your specific example in there, right? But we need to go to the other. You need a paragraph now which explains why others prefer to live off campus in apartments, right? We need, because we're comparing. We're comparing the two views first and then you want to take your own position. So now that we talked about the advantages of living in dormitories, the next part of your essay, you should talk about the advantages of living off campus in apartments, right? So here it is. Other students prefer to live off campus in apartments during their university studies primarily because it's much cheaper. Because these students live off campus, they will not need to buy an expensive meal pl plan that dorm students have to purchase. A dorm meal plan offering three meals a day, seven days a week can cost more than 3,000 US dollars 
uh, for an entire semester. However, students living in apartments off campus buy and prepare their own food at a fraction of the cost of that amount. To illustrate, when I was attending California State University San Bernardino in California, I lived off campus in an apartment. Typically, I would spend about $1,500 on food for an entire semester, which is about 50% less than what it would have cost me if I had chosen to live on campus in a dorm. In addition, off-campus apartments off-campus apartment rent is also about 30% less than the rent for dorms on campus. As a result, by living off-campus in apartments, students can save tons of money on both on both rent and food. There it is. So now we need to get to your position here, right? So that's what you have to do here is to you have to frame this. When I was a university student, all their majors were different. See, you, you just give the example here, but you don't frame it. You don't give it a topic sentence. You went right to the details. So we need to work on this paragraph a little bit more. So in the last paragraph, I'm going to frame it kind of like this. Personally, I prefer to live on campus and dorms because students can support each other much better during adversity. When I was a university student, I was living with my roommate, although our majors, I was living, how about in a dorm with my roommate. Although our majors and years were different, we did not have any issues for a few months because we're both always busy. Um, we're both busy. I'm going to just put busy studying and keeping quiet at home. with each other. However, when the deadline for my big research when the deadline for my big research project in the history class was coming in a week my roommate suddenly got seriously injured when she was cycling on campus. might want to say maybe in fact to emphasize this idea in fact she broke her legs and needed someone's help to stand up and walk so I had to take care of her honestly I first thought her to be a nuisance because I wanted I'm going to just put, I wanted to focus on my research at that time, but I tried to make time to take care of her. I'm going to say take care of her, not herself. Because you're doing it, not she. I got food for her, prepared meals, washed her clothes, and cleaned up her room. How about this? Wash her clothes. Let's put a comma here. Get rid of Anne. Uh, I got food for her, prepared meals, washed her clothes, cleaned up her room, and managed to make some time to work on my research as well. While doing... How about this, while providing physical and emotional emotional support to my roommate, while providing physical and emotional support to my roommate, I somehow found myself being able to more effectively focus on my research. Also, I felt warm when my roommate was crying and said to me, thank you. 
living in the dorm allowed me to provide to support my roommate during her difficult ordeal the importance compassion and empathy so that's it so I, I didn't have to make many changes here I simply needed to frame it and give it a purpose so you kind of see what we did there so if we take a look at the entire essay right so let's get rid of this so basically I'm taking your essay that's a 22 and showing you the edited version here I think pretty sure this would be pretty close to 30 points it exactly answers the question right let's look at the question one more time you see this so let's look at the essay one more time humans social animals that can't live on their own need to constantly socialize with others and cooperate together in order to have a better life in addition Young men and women entering universities for the first time have a vital need to interact with others while they pursue their undergraduate and graduate studies. When these students get admitted into the university of choice, they will have to decide where they will live. Some students will choose to live on campus in dormitories, while other students will opt to live off campus in apartments. There are advantages for both of these living arrangements. Many students prefer to live in dormitories on campus so that they have constant social interaction. If students live in the dormitories where students live together, we probably just put they there, they are forced to constantly interact with others because most students live with roommates and even if they live in a single room, students in the next rooms can come to the rooms easily. Therefore, students need to be able to effectively communicate and compromise with, with others in order to share a place to live, which helps them improve their skills to socialize with other people. Eventually, these dorm residing students will obtain these social interaction skills, which will help them succeed at work and even enrich their private lives after graduation. Other students prefer to live off campus in apartments during their university studies primarily because it is much cheaper. Because these students live off campus, they will not need to buy an expensive meal plan that dorm students have to purchase. A dorm meal plan offering three meals a day, seven days a week, can cost more than $3,000 U.S. for an entire semester. However, students living in apartments off campus buy and prepare their own food at a fraction of the cost of that amount. To illustrate, when I was attending California State University San Bernardino in California, I lived off campus in an apartment. Typically, I would spend about $1,500 U.S. on food for an entire semester, which is about 50% less on what it would have cost me if I'd chosen to live on campus in a dorm. In addition, off-campus apartment rent is also about 30% less than the rent for dorms on campus. As a result, by living off-campus in apartments, students can save tons of money on both rent and food. Personally, I prefer to live I prefer to live in dorms because students can support each other much better during adversity. When I was a university student, I was living in a dorm with my roommate. Although our majors and years were different, we did not have any issues for a few months because we were both always busy studying and keeping quiet at home with each other. However, when the deadline for my big research project in the history class was coming in a week, my roommate suddenly got seriously injured when she was cycling on campus. In fact, she broke her legs and needed someone's help to stand up and walk so I had to take care of her. Honestly, I first thought her to be a nuisance because I wanted to focus on my research at the time. 
but I tried to make time to care for her. I got food for her, prepared meals, washed her clothes, cleaned up her room, and managed to make some time to work on my research as well. While providing physical and emotional support to my roommate, I somehow found myself being able to more effectively focus on my research. I also felt warm when my roommate was crying and said to me, thank you. Living in the dorm allowed me to support my roommate during her difficult, difficult ordeal. So I put this here at the end because this goes back to this topic sentence here. And I was also able to learn the importance of compassion and empathy. Right, so that's what I would do is the problem with yours, you just didn't frame your essay according to the writing prompt and that's why I gave you the score that I did. All right, so thank you for doing this particular writing practice test. Uh, I think the main thing you can learn here is make sure that you read the writing prompt, you understand what you're being asked to do before you do it.